In this video, we're going to look at a number of concepts that help to explain how part of the internet works, and more specifically, how the World Wide Web works. We'll be describing what the URL, Universe Resource Locator, is, explain the term fully qualified domain name, domain name and IP address. We're going to describe how domain names are organised. We're going to understand the purpose and function of the domain name service and its reliance on domain name servers. And we're going to explain the service that's provided by internet registers and why they're needed. So let's get started. So you'll be quite used to this. This is a, a, a browser. And as you're well aware, you can type a web address up here in the browser. Uh, press enter. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, a web page appears down here. Now you may have used different words for this in the past. You may call this a web address, a, a URL. Um, it's actually split into a number of important parts and they have different names. So this part here is what's known as the website domain name. So think of it as like bbc.co.uk, amazon.com or craigandave.org. When we add the host onto the beginning, so in this case that's the www, which is the most common type you typically see, this entire section now becomes known as the fully qualified domain name. Once you add the access method onto the start, which is typically HTTP or HTTPS for a secure encrypted website, and we'll be looking at uh, various protocols in another video, um, then we have the location here. So we now know the method to access it, the host and the domain. Now we've got to the site, we have the location within that site. So once we've gone to the site, there's obviously a number of different web pages and we're going to access uh, a resource in this location. So we've got like a folder structure here. And then finally, the name of the actual file. So in this case, this web address is actually getting a PDF into your web browser. The entire thing, all the way from the method to the resource, that's what's known as the URL. Some candidates confuse this bit, say, oh, type in here the URL craigandave.org. Well, that's not the URL. That's the website domain name. That's the fully qualified domain name. It's the entire string, including all of these elements, which is technically known as the Uniform Resource Locator, or URL. So, talking about domain names for a second, who are they run by? You know, who decides what domain name? There's one company out there that has the domain name bbc.co.uk. There's one that has google.com and google.co.uk. Once that domain name's gone, no other person can use it. So clearly these can't be run by any single government because the internet's a worldwide thing. Well, they're run by companies called internet registers. Now these are five global organisations governed overarchingly by the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, ICANN. And these large companies, these global organisations, hold a worldwide database of all the domain names and who they belong to. So effectively, if you buy a bit of web space through a local ISP, they will have a number of domains they can assign you. But at the very top level, it's these global organisations which are controlling these worldwide databases of domain names. They're the ones that make, uh, make sure that no domain name can be used twice and that every domain name, therefore, is unique, which is an essential concept of the World Wide Web. So, um, talking about domain names for a second, it's important for exam to understand how they're organised. So, domain names are structured into a hierarchy, as you can see here. Now, we've just shown part of the hierarchy. The small domains appear lower down, and uh, the higher up, the more generic and global the domains. When you write a domain out, you write it out from the bottom up using dots. Uh, so, here's a good example, bbc.co.uk. That is bbc. Dot co dot uk. So we can see here uh, we have what's called a third level domain, so that's one of these small ones down here. Now if we move up the hierarchy, 
we have a second level domain, and as we go to the top, we have what are called country level domains. Now, you'll be quite familiar with these top level ones. A lot of sites have uh, .co.uk at the end. In France, they have .fr for France. There's also non-specific top level domains, like generic ones, like .com, .org and .net. So let's have a look at the relationship between domain names, domain name servers, and IP addresses. Now, for this, we need to get our head around a few terms. We already know what the fully qualified domain name is. That's a domain name which includes the host, like www.craigandave.org. So what is the domain name system? Well, this is the system which is run and maintained and where web addresses are signed from the organisation we spoke about earlier. It's an internationally agreed structure which classifies the area and internet resources where it resides and that structures into a hierarchy which we just saw. And finally, IP. So, if you don't know already, an IP can be thought of as a unique address which is given to a single network device. So it performs a similar function to your home address. Every single device which is connected to the internet has to have an IP address. Now, these IP addresses can change, which is something we're going to talk about more in another video, but for now, just be happy with the fact that every device on the internet must have an IP address. It would be hard for you to post a letter to someone if their house didn't have an address. And the same thing's true here. Now, IP addresses are typically strings of number. A traditional version 4 IP address could look something like this. It's a set of four numbers. There's also something called IP version 6 addresses, which are much more complicated. And again, we'll get into those in another video. But effectively, every website out there has an IP address. Now, as you can imagine, these aren't very handy. If I said to you, oh yes, the BBC's web address, it's 193.63.99.173, that's not as easy to remember as bbc.co.uk, but every website out there has to have an IP address. So let's have a look at how the whole domain name system works with these IP addresses to make things easier. So we're going to step through an example. So here, a user has typed into a, um, a web browser a URL request for craigandave.org. The browser extracts the fully qualified domain name because they were typed in the whole URL. It extracts the fully qualified domain name. It then sends this off to the local DNS server that's probably been run by your ISP. Now here's the key bit. The local DNS server has a lookup table and the lookup table maps the web address you've asked for with IPs. So it'll look down its list for Craig and Dave, www.craigandave.org. If it finds it, it will return the correct IP to the browser. Now, there is a chance that this DNS doesn't have this mapping entry in its lookup table, and that's quite possible. If this is the case, it passes the request upwards onto a much larger regional DNS. Now these have much, much bigger lookup tables, so the chances are is it will find the matching entry. In the likely event the regional domain name server doesn't have an entry, it passes it all the way up to what are called network service providers. Now there's much, much fewer of these on the internet, and these have absolutely massive tables of um, web addresses and matching IPs. Either way, once the web address is found, the IP will be passed back to the browser. Incidentally, as it passes back, it will place the entry into these tables, which means in future, getting the lookup will be much quicker. Once the IP address is back here, we can now send a specific GET request to the web server that actually holds the Craig and Dave website, because it's the IP we need to know. Yeah, We've typed in craigandave.org, that's told us where it really sits, that's the IP address. Now I've got it, I can use the IP address and jump over. And then obviously the files return to the browser. So essentially there, there's the really important link between IP address 
and your fully qualified domain name, which is inside your URL, and the role that the DNS, the domain name system, plays in matching those two up. 